What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. With this video, we are jumping into Fantastic Four issue number 10. Now, when it comes to the Fantastic Four story so far, every issue seems to be something new. A different story, a different mission. And this issue is no exception. But I gotta say that this issue really is a lot of fun. This is probably one of my favorite issues so far of Norse Run. Outside of the Doom story, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. This story is taking place over hundreds of years. And if you're asking yourself, how is that even possible? It's going to be fully explained as we dive into this. But this story's got a little bit of everything that you would want. The manipulation of time. The science behind it. An alien race lost in space. And of course, the Fantastic Four. So make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel. Make sure that you like this video. And with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we are picking up with an alien race. We are on their Ark ship, the last survivors of their species. And this species, they are making their way to their new home. They keep one person awake at all times, what they refer to as the caretakers. But when our caretaker wakes up, he knows that he's not supposed to be awake yet. When he goes looking for the old caretaker, what he finds is that that caretaker is dead. And drawn on the wall looks like very rough sketches of the Fantastic Four. To understand this story, we have to go back 500 years. Now, the ship log records this as being 36,525 weeks. That is how long they have been traveling through the cosmos. And it has been three days since the stars in the universe disappeared. They have been plunged into infinite darkness. The stasis pods, they are all safe. And the engines, they still run. And this is a very thankful thing, because once their engines stop, you cannot restart them. But even though they are on, they have no thrust. Something seems to be holding them in place. And so the caretaker, he tries to figure out what is going on. After weeks and weeks and weeks and months, no progress has been made. This is when the caretaker sees a blinding light on the outside. Now we know this to be Johnny. But this caretaker has no idea what this is. All the caretaker sees is an individual on fire outside of the ship. The caretaker has started recording time since the caretaker saw the flaming person outside. It has been 71 weeks. The ship's sensors do not detect him. There's a possibility that the caretaker might be losing his mind. After 160 weeks, he has been choosing rooms with portholes, doing so to keep an eye on the flaming person, but still no closer to figuring out what is going on. The caretaker's entire population is counting on him to figure this out, yet time and time again he is failing. After 5 years, no stars, no motion. The caretaker believes that the burning figure has been speaking to him, that he can hear his voice in his head, and he rejoices for he is good, believing that he can save his people if he is to join the flaming figure. We see the caretaker open up the airlock, and in doing so, the caretaker goes out into space, only to die instantly. This is what takes us to 400 years ago. The new caretaker is awake, going over the logs after everything that the last caretaker had wrote down. But this caretaker has found no evidence of a flaming figure. With the last caretaker dying decades before she even woke up, she only has everything he recorded down to go by. But right now, there is a giant banging on the outside of the ship. Every 3.3 seconds, the Ark is attacked by a mysterious, strange, monstrous alien. We know this as the Thing. And so the caretaker intends to kill the Thing. To take an opportunity and take this dude out. With the banging on the outside of the hole, we see the caretaker open fire. We see the whole of the ship being breached, believing maybe she figured it out. Maybe she's got this already taken care of. But that is when she hears the banging again, and again, and again. This inevitably drives her mad. 
and that's what takes us to 300 years ago. The next caretaker waking up to find that the ship is stuck, that the stars are gone, and the previous caretakers are all dead by their own hands. The logs are saying that nobody's been both alive and awake on the Ark for almost a century. But whatever happened to the other caretakers, he knows that it is coming for him. He hasn't seen a fiery figure, no rock monster, but he has been getting proximity alarms in empty rooms. Doors are opening and closing by themselves, but there seems to be a pattern. They're moving towards the core, towards the engine, but when he tries to reach them first, it's as if something is blocking him some kind of invisible, impenetrable wall. Now, the Ark was built to last 10,000 years. Everything's solid metal. Even if he could try to shoot through the wall, it wouldn't work. He can't get around it. And now, he is starving to death. There is nothing he can do. But as he sits here, there appears to be something showing up in the doorway. Some kind of skeleton that is forming. We know this as Sue Richards. Taking us to 200 years ago, the next caretaker has been woken, and now he fights against what he has no idea is. Some kind of snake-like creature making its way through the whole system. And one by one, the caretaker starts shooting them down. But inevitably, the caretaker gets overrun. Shooting in all directions, we see that the caretaker, he shoots at something and it ricochets and it hits him right in the back of the head. This is what takes us to 100 years ago. The new caretaker recognizing that this has been going on for centuries. Believing that maybe this frenzy was caused by the stasis pods. Maybe this was some kind of shared psychosis. But that's when it happened to him. He saw the burning man. Taking a moment and trying to think about this logically. Either he is going crazy like the rest of them. Or this flaming man is the harbinger of madness. Either way, there is nothing he can do. And so he begins to go over what he knows. 1. The stars have disappeared hundreds of years ago. 2. Their engines failed at some point, stranding them in this void. And 3. Alien monsters have stalked the Ark ever since. No caretakers surviving long under their incursions. But the question is, why haven't these aliens killed them yet? Because every time a caretaker dies, a century goes by. They have plenty of time to do whatever it is they want to do. This is when he comes to the conclusion that the, these guys, they're not trying to kill them. Not really sure what to do in this situation. What he is about to do is a huge risk. Because if he shuts off the engines, everything will stop. They will never be able to turn them on again. But he overrides the engines and he shuts it all down. That's what picks us up with the Fantastic Four. They see this ship and they are up in space right outside of Earth. Now this alien ship, the reason that they're not picking this up is because they are in that space time where the Fantastic Four children might be showing up. This space-time manifold is artificial, and they are deducing that this wasn't intentional. Being able to jury-rig some things to keep them outside of this collapsed area of space-time, they cannot predict how anyone with inside the ship will perceive them. And so the Fantastic Four, they go down to the ship, with the thing banging it open. They go inside. As they make their way through the ship, what they see is the drawings on the wall of the Fantastic Four. And Reed is saying that this is fascinating. Their instantaneous appearance implying the time is moving much faster for them than it is for the Fantastic Four. Given the temporal frame conflict, it is likely that they are appearing at multiple and disparate times, locations, and relative speeds. And so Sue goes ahead and makes them all invisible as a precaution. With the field seeming to originate from the center of the ship, the Fantastic Four make their way to the core. And they think it is weird that they haven't fixed their engines yet, given all the time that they have been burning through. This suggests that they are unable to do so. But whatever they're gonna do, they gotta do it quickly. Every few seconds, another one of the stasis pods is suddenly opening up and it's empty. These people are living and dying whole lives while they are standing around having a conversation. This is where Sue, she sends exploratory force fields down every corridor throughout the ship. Finding the engine room, they prepare to head that direction. 
with Richards pushing himself through the weak points in the force field's perimeter. He puts his fingers inside, and that's when he starts feeling a burning sensation. Now, he doesn't know it, but the guy in the engine room who shot himself in the back of the head by accident. That's exactly what's happening here. And then everything goes quiet, as if the engine ships have completely collapsed. So they get in there and they start working on the space-time warping engine. And Reed Richards and the others, they are highly impressed with this engineering. This ship has the possibility to last indefinitely. But as they get everything taken care of, when they turn it on, their belt should return them to normal space-time. Pressing the button, we see that they are back. Everything is good. The ship is back on their way. Wherever they are headed, the ship is headed in that direction. So from their viewpoint, their ship broke down and these weird time aliens started creeping around their ship for who knows how long. But they were able to save the ship as it takes off past Earth. 500 years from now, this is week 88,704 of their journey to their new world. The new caretaker is being woke up for the caretaking duties, to take over for the last. Not sure where to begin, the old caretaker lets it be known that they were delayed for many centuries. But they're going to be okay, they are safe and they are on their way to their new home. Wanting to know what will happen or what did happen. This caretaker tells the story like he was told. Their story begins with a catastrophe, but it ends with aliens from another world who only wanted to help. This is where we see a giant mural of the Fantastic Four. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. You know, North really has been knocking it out of the park. His understanding of science, it absolutely blows mine out of the water. His Fantastic Four run is so ingrained in science and theory that it actually makes me have to go look up some of these words, some of these theories, some of these ideas to see how they have any practical use in modern day science or even futuristic science or the theory of what is possible or the theories of what could be possible. So the idea here is this ship got stuck in a, a kind of space-time loop and that turning off their engines was really their only option. The Fantastic Four, they came aboard, they fixed the ship and they got them on their way. What the Fantastic Four was not aware of is that this space dilation, it took place over like 500 years. And so all the aliens on board, they only saw small pieces and fragments of what the Fantastic Four were doing. While on the outside, this took, like I said, 500 years. All they saw were small glimpses over this time period of aliens appearing to be attacking the ship. And it took this alien race finally piecing all of this together. Over the, the span of centuries, they were able to piece it all together and see that the Fantastic Four, they were not here to hurt them. They were only trying to help them. This is a beautiful use of science and science fiction. It's one of those comics that truly makes you think. And this is exactly what we expect from the Fantastic Four. Now, don't get me wrong. I absolutely want to know what is going on with the Fantastic Four children. It seems like North is definitely putting off bringing Franklin Richards back. Now this might be for a multitude of reasons. Maybe Marvel has plans for him moving forward. Maybe during the Jonathan Hickman Gods, who knows. But the last we saw, Franklin Richards appeared to get his powers back. Now this has not been solidified, this has not been confirmed. But after everything that happened, it looked like Franklin got his powers back. Now, I'm, I'm under the assumption right now that he didn't. And that is because of his reality warping powers, you would think that he has the ability to bring them back regardless of whatever Reed Richards did. But if they haven't returned, this makes me believe that Franklin Richards hasn't got his powers back. That he had his powers back only momentarily. And then after that story arc, his powers were no longer there again. Of course, this is all just pure speculation. I have no idea if this is actually factual, what is going on with Franklin. That's why I want to know. 
That's why I wish North would really drive that forward and let us know what is going on with the kids. But, but with that being said, I am not upset that North has done these stories. While they may be mostly standalone stories all on their own, the Fantastic Four doing science and science fiction things. That's what we love about the Fantastic Four. And I think that these stories so far, most of them have been absolute bangers. But this one in particular was absolutely fantastic. And I hope that North can keep bringing it in this style and in this manner. But let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories, if you would like to get completely caught up on everything going on with this series. Be sure to check out the link in my description, as well as the top of this video. It'll get you completely caught up on everything going on with the Fantastic Four. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon, having multiple different tiers, from $1 to $50, from loyalty badges to comics every single month. Not only are you helping out the channel tremendously, but you are getting tons of perks in the process. If you are unable to do this, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.